Hey, what's up guys, and welcome back to Drinking and Drawing! Wah! Can you believe we're on episode 2? Um, and yeah, I'm once again in voiceover mode. I'll talk about that in a bit, but first I want to talk about this tea, because maybe you're here just for me to review <laughs> this tea right here. Uh, this is White Two Tea's uh, Lesser Evils. This tea was pressed, I believe, in 2021, so it is a fairly young tea. It is a show, poor, small batch, as you could see it said on the wrapper. Um, this tea is delicious, and since I drank it, I can't stop thinking about it, which is bad, because White 2T sent me this sample as a, as a gift with the rest of my order. They sent me this one pearl, and re-watching this footage is, is making me be like, oh man, I really want to taste that. Uh, that show poor one one more time but yeah this tea was really great it is a fantastic ripe and I thank white two tea a lot for sending me this one it is a it is a good a good pick from them it's pretty inexpensive as well so I'm probably gonna go back and get more samples next time I shop from them I did just place another order from them and I did not put this in the order so next next time really but this ripe it smells really different from other ones that i've had it's i've been i've just started getting into tea this year you know so i haven't had like every poor in the face of the earth i haven't explored or experienced every flavor profile that i can yet but this one is way more fruity and slightly floral not too floral but slightly floral mostly fruity than any other ripe poor I've ever had. Uh, it was the first time that I was really confronted with those flavors when it came to a ripe. And it was still pretty dark, very thick, and uh, creamy, sort of oily uh, mouthfeel. And it was really, it was good, it was a super good tea. It's definitely good if you're looking for something to drink every day, you know, probably a really good daily drinker. I'm not really willing to order a full cake of it, but it was a good tea, and I miss it. And watching me drink it there, <laughs> and knowing that I'm drinking it throughout this entire video <laughs> while I'm drawing, I'm slightly jealous of my past self from earlier, having enjoyed this tea. It's been a little bit since I recorded this footage of me drawing, and I do miss, I do miss that, uh, that ripe. It was good stuff. So, uh, I, I, I've been, I'm just sitting here reading my tasting notes here, trying to make sure I aren't, am not missing anything. Smells sweet and floral while tasting muddy and woody. Yeah, yes. Fruity and thick. Yes, that is true. All these things that I wrote are true. So, I don't think that I've talked about white 2 tea in my last video. I don't remember what tea I reviewed for the last drinking and drawing, if I even like reviewed a tea or not, or did I just drink it and not talk about it? I do want half of this, half of these drinking and drawing videos to be kind of me reviewing and then the other half being me drawing. But I do want to say before I go deeper into tea that this video is in two times speed. I'm sorry, <laughs> and I'm so sorry about this, but I cannot talk for an hour over my painting. I tried already, I already tried. I tried really hard to do it. And I just had to start over and I, I couldn't handle it. So I came back, I put this in two times speed and now I'm doing another voiceover over it. And it's not, this is not the way that I want these drinking and drawing videos to go. The way that I want them to go is I drink tea and I paint in real time, with real time voiceover while I'm painting. Sadly, it was just, it's just unachievable this time around. I couldn't get myself to talk for that amount of time and uh, I was running out of things to say and think about. So I've decided to speed up the painting process here. That way I just have enough to talk about. It's not boring or exhausting, but I do want you guys to know that I do want to do these videos while I'm painting, recording my audio. Problem is, I, I got the new microphone in the mail. 
recently. As I said in the last one, I said I was planning on getting a new mic for my camera and it's bricked. <laughs> they sent me a bricked mic. So I have to return it. And returning things in a co at, at college is very painful because I have to find a box to send, the, send it back in. And then I have to find a printer to print out the warranty form and to fill it out. And then I have to find a post office to mail it. It's just, it's a real annoyance that I have to go through, but I finally have a box and I finally have the warranty form printed out. So I'm going to be returning my microphone and getting a new one sent to me. But I wanted to record this drinking and drawing with that microphone while I was painting. However, it's just, it's not achievable. I'm sorry, I really am sorry. So that's the reason why the video is sped up two times speed. It's, it's I'm painting in, in double, double the speed here. And I will talk about the drawing as well, but I do want to go back to talking about tea for a little bit. If you're here and you're just here because you want to hear me talk about white two tea or tea in general, good news, I'm here talking about tea right now. <laughs> so uh, to talk about white two tea, um, they have quickly become a tea brand that I really enjoy drinking their teas. Uh, very enjoyable, a bit pricey sometimes and a bit overhyped other times, but and they do have some fantastic tea that is affordable and the tea is very curated in a way that I, I appreciate, you know. As a new poor drinker, it can get really confusing shop, shopping for tea and seeing all these, you know, names of factories and tea plantations and uh, storage styles and such that I just don't understand yet or fully comprehend. And when you're shopping on White 2 Tea's site, you're kind of entrusting yourself to the guy that runs the shop. And he definitely has good taste. So when you go on there, you're not getting all the details on how the tea is made, all the crazy uh, stuff that maybe serious tea drinkers would want to know. But you are getting good tea. You just putting your faith in someone's um, someone's company, and I think White Two Tea does that really well. They use very flowery language when they describe their tea to kind of make it more fun and approachable. And I I totally enjoy that. I totally respect it. And they're making some really good tea, and I totally recommend you go check them out. <laughs> As for Lesser Evils, the tea that I that I'm drinking in this video today. Delicious, amazing. I've loved most of their teas. This one's definitely a favorite of mine from theirs. Uh, I would not want to get a whole cake of it. Unless it's affordable, I wouldn't want to get a whole cake of it. Problem with me buying full cakes of tea right now is that I'm in a dorm, so I don't have a reliable way to store cakes and keep them, you know, fresh and tasty over time. <laughs> so I've been sort of uh, vibing with samples recently and enjoying that tea sample lifestyle. I'm sure once I get back home for summer, I'll probably invest in some cakes and some way to store them properly over time. But for now, it's it's been just me vibing with these samples. And White Two Tea is the first tea retailer that I've gone back and placed a second order with. I've been buying a lot of tea from separate sellers and trying a whole bunch of different tea sellers and such. And White 2 Tea is the first one that I've gone back and made another purchase. And that's because I feel like I, I missed, I missed a lot when I made that first purchase a while back. And it was really a while back because uh, the bummer about White 2 Tea is that the shipping takes quite a bit of time. I found that they were one of the slowest ones to ship to me. They were not the slowest, but they definitely were one of the slowest. And a lot of that is because that they're, they are located in China. They don't have a US warehouse or anything to ship from like Yunnan sourcing might. So you, you are putting in a bit of time waiting for their tea to come in, but it doesn't, should not discourage you from ordering from them. You know, order your tea and then wait. I just wish that when I had done that first Y2T order that I had been more vigorous with my shopping. 
and had ordered more tea at once rather than doing two separate small orders. But it's all right, you know, it's okay. I have enough tea to last me between now and then. It doesn't really matter, so. I really do recommend The Lesser Evils if you're looking for a tea to get to white from white. I recommend it. Uh, if you like fruitier, ripe pours, or maybe you're just new to pour in general, I find that this one is very approachable, The Lesser Evils. I, I, when I first tasted it, I, I thought like, oh, this is a pour that a lot of people would probably really enjoy. Like even people that are, you know, kind of scared with tea or nervous or are picky, haven't had their taste buds adjusted to pour yet completely. I found it to be a really approachable one. So if you're just getting into pour and you're probably, maybe you're gonna place a white two tea order soon. Uh, I do recommend getting a sample or two, or a cake if you if you're if you're a wealthy lad. Maybe you want to get a cake of it if you like the things that I said are good about it. It is fruity. It is thick. It is nice. It smells delicious. It's it's a bit woody as well and wet. It does taste very wet. So definitely look into that one. But yeah, I think that I also think that last time I recorded a drinking and drawing, the last one, the first one that I did. This is only the second now. <laughs> I'm probably gonna do a third soon. Uh, but for my first one, I think I didn't have the tea set that I have now. Ain't that something? <laughs> I can't remember, I don't remember. It was a while ago that I did that video and I feel, I feel bad. Like I haven't been posting every week like I wanted to, but yeah, I have a tea set now. Like a full, a full Gong Fu tea set. And typically I would recommend like the shop that I got these from, but uh, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of money. I don't, I still don't have a whole lot of money. I'm still pretty broke. I'm a broke student. So when I was looking for tea sets to buy, I went on Etsy and I kind of just bought what I could afford and what I thought looked cool. I do think this tea set looks cool. And I will say if you go on Etsy and you search up Gong Fu tea set, this will come up in the results. And I'm not gonna link it, but I will say that that's just how you find it. It's from Etsy. However, I will say, don't get the tray that I have. If you see the tray that I have on Etsy, it's not good, don't buy it. Um, it's already falling apart. I've had it for like a month, maybe at this point, maybe less than a month, probably less than a month now I've had it. And I just don't recommend it. Out of the wood was not treated properly or maybe it's not even real wood or something but it, it is a, it is a cheap tea tray but it's falling apart and i would have rather i had just spent the extra buck or two to like get a nicer tea tray from a a reputable uh tea seller so next time i'm shopping putting in a big tea order from a tea seller i'm probably gonna look for a tea seller that has a tray in stock that i could grab um because I'm not too happy with this one. <laughs> so yeah, that's that. I have a new tea tray, I'm drinking more tea. Um, and with tea, I've been, I think I talked a little bit about this in my last video, tea helping my anxiety quite a bit recently. I really struggled last quarter at school and I, and I was struggling really bad with my anxiety last year. I think last year was one of the worst years I've ever had when it came to mental health. And it was very inward that those issues were. You know, previous occasions when I was having mental health issues, I would, uh, it was very outwardly shown. Last year was a very closed off mental health problematic year, but this year has been going really well, actually. My mental health has been really solid this year. And I kind of want to credit the T for that. <laughs> That sounds weird, but I've been, I think I've been practicing Cha Dao this whole time without realizing it. Cha Dao as in the way of tea, as in I've been using tea uh, for meditation and tea has been helping me because I use it to meditate. And the more and more I drink tea, the more I realize that it is a mental health practice for me and it is a meditative practice and as I was researching tea and I was researching cha dao. I came across chi. People would talk about chi and tea having good chi and whatnot. And I'm, I'm like, what does all this mean? And now suddenly I'm 
learning about Taoism and doing Qigong and doing Tai Chi in my in my dorm room and stretching and meditating. It's this whole rabbit hole that I've kind of fallen down. <laughs> I might make a separate video on that, to be honest. A separate video on Sha Dao and a separate video on Taoism in general. So uh, that might be a whole other thing to talk about. But tea has really been helping me recently. Uh, just keep myself going and feeling alive and healthy surprisingly it, not something that i would have ever expected to happen you know i never would have expected tea to help with my mental health issues but here we are so i, I i've been drinking way too much tea <laughs> i have a lot of tea i'm excited to record more of these drinking and drawing videos uh, and talk more about tea that i like I figure I'll probably only review tea that I enjoy on the YouTube videos. Uh, there's been kind of a little list of tea that I've been really enjoying and I want to talk about in videos. And I've kind of been making a list of those teas, my five star teas. I'll talk about this Himi gouache in a second as well, by the way. Don't think I'm ignoring the painting process here. I'm not ignoring it. I'll talk about it soon. But I want half the video to be tea talk and half of the video to be art talk. But anyway, okay, so what was I saying? I started a tea tumbler. <laughs> That's the last thing I wanted to talk about with tea. I started a tea tumbler. Basically, I wanted somewhere to record the tea that I was drinking and review it for myself for future reference. And tumbler is fantastic for that. Tumblr is lovely because you could post, you could post with text, you could use different fonts, you could add photos, you could add GIFs, videos, and the best thing about it is hashtags. So I've got all my tea ha like tagged properly, all my tea reviews are tagged, that way I could go back on my tea tumbler and search up by hashtag, so by rating. That way next time I go tea shopping, I could, I could make sure that I'm buying teas that I have you know, reviewed highly before. So I drink tea every day and every time I drink a new tea, I, I review it on my Tumblr, <laughs> my tea Tumblr. Maybe I'll link it in the description. It's really not something that I, like, I care for other people to look at. It's really for me. I was gonna buy a journal uh, to like write down the tea that I like, but I didn't feel like spending more money. <laughs> so I figured Tumblr is free. I already have a blog on there, so I might as well make a side blog. And, uh, yeah, there's like, I have like three followers, I think. So it's really, really, I don't know why more people aren't tea blogging on Tumblr, but it is a fantastic way to keep track of what tea I'm drinking. Truly fantastic. And I recommend it. If you're drinking tea, try making a tea tumbler and using hashtags and such to keep track of what tea you like. <laughs> so next time I go shopping, and I could go back and look at my at my Tumblr and say, oh, I really liked this tea. I should buy a full cake of it this time, yada, yada, yada. And thus, as I've been reviewing these teas on my Tumblr, I've had a few that I really like and I definitely want to use for drinking and drawing videos, you know? So the next one is probably going to be Yunnan Sourcing's Demon Ox, which I think might be my favorite ripe pour so far. Uh, I don't want to do two ripes in a row, but I think I'm gonna just because I really like that tea. And I don't have a whole lot of it left. And I might buy a full, it might be a full cake purchase soon from you non sourcing for me. But anyway, uh, I don't want to just review poor either. I want to do some oolong and some white tea and some, some red tea, etc. But right now it's mostly poor because that's mostly what I drink. I'll just have to deal with that, I guess. But anyway, <laughs> to, to, to uh, switch gears here, painting. <laughs> this is drinking and drawing. I drink tea and I draw. Um, while I'm drinking the 2021 Lesser Evils from white to tea, I'm also painting this, what you might have recognized as a master's study because it is a master's study. I'm painting a screenshot from Howl's Moving Castle. This is actually one of my favorite scenes in all of animation. It is one of those times where I was watching an animated film and I just went, wow, that is 
drop dead gorgeous looking. This is one of my favorite backgrounds of all time, if not my favorite. The way that this scene, just the way that it looks and how pretty it is, has inspired my art since is uh, hard, hard to hard to state into words. Uh, it's that scene where the house is shown and there's a meadow of flowers. I don't want to spoil Howl's Moving Castle. This is a really important scene to the story, so. If you haven't seen Howl's Moving Castle, you should absolutely watch it. It is essential viewing for animation. You have to see that Ghibli film. It is maybe my, I think it's my second favorite Ghibli film. Princess Mononoke is my favorite. But here I'm painting it and it's very, very, very small scale. If I were to put a nickel on the paper that I'm working on here, it, it would be the size of the house. The house is about the size of a nickel. So it was very difficult getting the details in the painting properly, and I really struggled with it. And by the time I had finished this painting, I was actually, I was super frustrated with it. And when I finished it, I didn't like it at all. I went to bed that night and I was like, I just painted that and now I have to record a voiceover for it, for drinking and drawing. Maybe I should just delete it and do something else. But I put a lot of time into it and now looking back at the painting, I really do like it. It is a super small landscape and I think I kind of, I think I did it pretty well for what my skill level is at, you know. I'm not the greatest landscape painter and that's why I'm doing this. That's why I painted this, is because I'm not a good landscape painter. I wanted to do a master's study because I wanted to try to get better at it. Um, and there's nothing wrong with me not being the best at it. And I think it would be cruel of me to not show the tiny failures that I make and only show what I'm good at on YouTube. So it, it, when, I, when I said to myself, I think I just want to delete this and do something else for drinking and drawing, that kind of thought just goes against what I really want for this little YouTube series that I'm doing. Uh, drinking and drawing, I really want it to be, you know, first of all about tea and how I like tea and reviewing tea that I like. But I, the other half of it, I really want it to be an exploration through art, you know, the way that I experience art specifically through my sketchbook. And my sketchbook is not perfect. I'm not some kind of perfect sketchbook haver. I do do a lot of polished work in my sketchbook, but a lot of it is fails. <laughs> That's what a sketchbook is. This video is not the perfections of my art. Look at this beautiful illustration I made. It's meant to be, here's my exploration with landscape painting. Uh, this is a learning process, yada yada. And I find that I haven't really been posting a lot on YouTube at all, but when I think about what I want this YouTube channel to be, I really want it to be me learning and exploring art with whoever's watching. You know, I don't want it to just be advice about art or like art tips or art tutorials or whatever. I want it to be watch me do this and fail or check out this cool thing I learned the other day or let's try doing this together, whatever. And I want it to be all art. I don't want it to just be drawing. I don't want it to just be animation, school related, whatnot. You know, I'm a concept art student. I don't want my channel to just be that. I want it to be, I tried doing watercolor painting again and I kind of suck at it, but at least I tried, you know? That's really what I want the focus of these videos to be and Thus, I kept, I kept this. I kept this painting in. For real, I wanted to, de to, de to delete it for a while. I did, I thought about it quite a bit. I thought, well, maybe I should just get rid of it. But here we are, and is this painting perfect? No, by any means it is not perfect, but do I like it? Yeah. Looking back on it, having, some, having had some time to think about this painting, uh, I do like how it came out. And I am pretty happy with it, actually. Uh, I think it's adorable, truly. <laughs> it really is adorable. It's one of those paintings that I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad if someone looking over at my sketchbook saw while I was in class or something. I would be happy to share this one with anyone. 
And I think that's cool. It's always good to look back and be like, actually, you know what, this drawing wasn't that bad. And I, I learned a lot too when I did this. It was, it, doing master's studies is incredibly important. And when I say master's studies, it doesn't just have to be like Da Vinci or like Michelangelo. Like you could do Studio Ghibli <laughs> as your master's study. It's perfectly fine to do that. And that's what I did here, you know? I've done enough studies of Da Vinci at, for class. Every now and then I want to try and paint a Ghibli painting. <laughs> and even though it doesn't look exactly like the painting that it is based off of, it looks pretty cute. It definitely looks pretty cute and I'm, and I'm happy with it and I don't hate it at all. And here in this, at this point in the video, you can really see it kind of starting to come together, which I really like. The greens, I never, I never use green in my art and I need to use green more. I'm starting to like green. <laughs> I think it's because I drink a lot of tea. I'm starting to like the color green because I can't stop drinking tea. Um, yeah, I, I really want to use more greens in my art and such. Um, so it was just, it was, it was a, a painful experience painting this. I struggled, I had a lot of doubt, and in the end, I think it came out fine. I don't see why I was so pissed about it. <laughs> it looks pretty okay, actually. But whatever, you know, uh, you should definitely do some master studies if you have the chance as an artist. Uh, it doesn't have to be in a sketchbook, um, but I think it's healthy to study and try to emulate the artists that you love, the, uh, the artists that you look up to the most. Just note that when you are emulating another artist's work, you also end up emulating their mistakes. And I think that's an important lesson to learn is that if I'm painting this Ghibli painting and say, whoever painted this background, I, I could say Miyazaki, I have no idea if he actually did this background or not, but whoever painted this Ghibli painting might have made a mistake somewhere in there with the perspective, with the shading, with whatever. Even though it looks like a perfect painting to me, there might be something wrong with it that I'm not seeing, that the original artist might even see themselves. And when you do a master's study, you are also studying from their mistakes. You know, you, you will make the same mistakes that they made. It's kind of like a game of telephone. Uh, if you keep redrawing the same thing, passing it down a line of people, it'll just get wackier and wackier. So I think it's good not just to do master's studies, but to also paint from life, obviously. You know, that can't be stated enough. I know a lot of artists, for some reason these days, get pissed about me, people saying, like, you should study life. Um, do you always have to study life? No. It is your art. You should do what you want. You know, if you don't ever want to study from life, you just want to draw from what you know in your brain. No reference needed. Uh, it's it's art. You know, you do, do what you want. No one is here to stop you. No one is here to tell you that what you're doing is wrong. But when I give advice about art, I always say you should reference from life. You shouldn't just reference from anime or from a cartoon or from even from a Ghibli background. You know, so when I do a painting like this, I have to keep that in mind. Like, there's... Uh, there can be something that I'm missing here from just doing a master's study, but the real reason why I did this master's study is because my professor wants me to kind of focus on the Ghibli style a little bit more with my art. Uh, I've been kind of struggling with my art style and having it be too comic-esque, which is fine because I love comics. I want to work in comics sometimes more than I want to work in animation. But uh, when it comes to building my concept development portfolio, uh, the focus that my professor and has been kind of pushing me towards, my professors, multiple really, they've been pushing me towards the direction of simpler figures and characters and props and such, but painterly backgrounds. And a lot of the times I get told, you should reference from this Ghibli film, or have you seen this Ghibli film, or you should try to focus on that style a little bit more. So I really have been trying to do, uh, I guess, more style studies. And this definitely counts. This definitely helps. But 
Additionally, I really just did this for fun, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> like, is this really helping me? I don't know how this, how this really affects my grades. It does not, but sometimes you just want to paint something for fun as well. And thus, that's what this happened here. I am using gouache and I am using watercolor. Uh, these are the Himi gouaches. I don't know if I should talk about these gouaches or not, or uh, uh, save it for another day, but I feel the need to say I bought the I bought the Himi gouache set, the Himi jelly gouache set. It went like half viral a couple of years ago. I bought it probably two or three years ago now, and it's still pretty good. When I opened it to do this painting, the gouaches were like rock hard. But I managed to reactivate the colors that I needed pretty quickly to work on this painting. Uh, it takes a little bit longer to reactivate than something like watercolor would, you know. You just slap water on watercolor and it's all good to go. But this one, it still worked out pretty okay. I'd say the Himi gouache set is still a viable uh, way to use gouache for sure. But I think the gouache really helped bring the piece together as well. The watercolor base still shines through the piece, that's for sure. It's You could still see the remnants of that first few washes that I did through the painting, which I wanted to keep when I went in with the gouache. I, I said, I don't want to cover the whole painting with that gouache. I really don't want to do that. So I made sure to keep the the watercolor base shining through it. But I do think that the gouache really tied it together quite well, I have to say. the gua Without the gouache, I would have really, really struggled. I still struggled a lot. And I think the big struggle especially was with the house. Oh, it was so hard to get the details on the house looking the way that I wanted them to, and it still doesn't look the way that I wanted it to at all. <laughs> but when I'm working on such a small scale, and I don't, I don't even have a brush small enough to do those details. I kind of just have to accept it. Like, well, you know, this is it. This is as good as I could get. Uh, <laughs> this is as good as I could get this to look. So there's no point in me complaining or crying about it. And by the time I finished this painting, I think I kind of just accepted that. I was like, well, there's no way I'm going to get those details looking perfect. So I might as well just give up. And like you can see my hair cutting in the frame. I'm sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I, I'm like so focused on these little details. Like I'm, I'm sitting all up close. I'm like, oh my God, I need to get these right. I need to get this right. And it's such a small little painting and I need to, I need to make sure it looks perfect. It's not possible. It's like really, it's like such a tiny painting that <laughs> there was no way I was going to get all the details right. At a certain point, I do realize this and give up and call the painting complete. And it's, you know, it's always hard to know when a painting is done, but I'm in my sketchbook anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much, but you can paint forever. You could do a watercolor and gouache painting forever. You could keep painting until the paper rips in half. And, it's, and you might still not consider it done, but eventually you do have to call it quits. And I do like the final touches I made on this painting. I do like these little, these little stems that I did. I think it really ties it together. But all in all, you know, sometimes you just gotta say, oh, it's done. I think it's done. <laughs> like right now it could have even been done, but I kept going because there was still stuff that I wanted to add and I, and I and I had goals. When I run out of ideas, then I'm like, oh, okay, you know, I guess it's, I guess we're good. I guess we're good. But here I still was like, I need to add this and this and I need to add this detail and this detail, blah, blah, blah. And I wish that this recording was like live. I, I'm, I'm still really sorry that like this drinking and drawing video is not a live recording. Me talking while I paint because it's hard for me to remember <laughs> what was going through my head when I did this uh, piece. And I think it really would have been helpful if you guys had heard my live reaction about it, but uh, it'll, it'll have to be another video or two. At least, at least another two. Uh, this one, this video is voiced over. The next one is definitely going to be voiced over. The one after that one, I don't know. That one might actually be a live session. 
And I, and I really hope that it is because that's really what I want for drinking and drawing. I really want it to be me talking while I paint. That way you get to hear what I'm thinking in that very moment. I really want the videos to be like, watch me struggle, you know, watch me do these studies and not really know what's going on. And I really wanted to do drinking and drawing, not only because of the tea, you know, but also because I wanted to show you guys experimentation in my sketchbook. I think it's something that I don't really have in my content right now. Like I stream on Twitch a lot, but it's mostly digital and my sketchbook's pretty personal to me. So I wanted to share some of it. So that's really the focus of drinking and drawing that I want is live sketchbook experimentation while reviewing tea, hitting two birds with one stone because who doesn't love getting tea drunk while you draw? Uh, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, isn't it? I'm just finishing up with this painting and I will uh, bring it close to the camera in a few seconds here, but let me know how you think it came out because I, I honestly, I like how it came out and I'm excited to do another one of these. I think next drinking and drawing will be with some tea from Yunnan Sourcing. I'm excited to talk about that. I did struggle with the clouds back there. <laughs> that was a struggle. Uh, I kind of forgot about those until the end of the painting where I was like, oh, I really got to fix that shit back there, but that's okay. It's fine. So I'm sorry this video is sped up. I'm sorry that it's not the way that I want it to be yet, but we will get there eventually. And I seriously hope that you enjoyed watching this. Let me know what you guys thought. If you have any YouTube video ideas for me or if you've had this tea before, have you had White Two Teas, Lesser Evils? Let me know what you thought of the tea as well. And yeah, uh, hit me up on Twitch. <laughs> hit me, give me a sub on YouTube if you enjoyed this. I'm going to make more content like this. I swear I'll be more active. Um, and I'll have to see you guys all later. I'll leave you guys here alone with the music and with the rest of the art. Hope you all have a good rest of your week.